Hi, I'm Chris Mutchler, Principal Enterprise Architect and VCDX257 from VirtualElephant.com. And in this video, I'm going to highlight the key differences between being a solutions architect, a VMware certified design expert, and ultimately becoming an enterprise architect. Let's get started. I've been fortunate in that over the last 10 years, I've been able to graduate from a solutions architect role to a role that required me to be a VCDX to ultimately becoming an enterprise architect over the last four or five years. So let's first start with what it means to be a solutions architect. Now, in my mind and in my experience, a solutions architect is someone who has the mentality and the desire to be able to think strategically and to be able to focus on the design of different data centers or public cloud offerings, whether it be solely focused on infrastructure or whether you're focused on the application layer. Now, for the purposes of this video, we're really going to focus in on what it means to be a solutions architect for infrastructure or for a public cloud offering. And so the first thing that I think that differentiates or starts someone out along the solutions architect career path is that they become a subject matter expert in a specific technology stack. So whether that technology stack is based off of VMware vSphere or VMware Cloud Foundation, as we call it today, or whether or not you started your career solely focused on some of the public cloud offerings. It might have been AWS or Azure or GCE. Regardless of which path you took or which technology stack you started out on, you should be a subject matter expert in that stack. You should understand what it means to be able to design an architecture or design an infrastructure around all of the different services that that public cloud stack or that private cloud stack has. So you more than likely understand all of the different applications and service offerings that an AWS has or that VMware has in its cloud foundation stack. And so you've probably figured out how to really become an expert in that stack and be able to design based off of requirements, constraints, and assumptions that you make to be able to design a stack that can fit a specific purpose or be able to uh, work exclusively for a specific set of apps that your company or organization or even that your partner or your, you know, you're a consultant that you're working for another, another company. Now, a solutions architect, at the bare minimum, I believe, should be able to understand how to talk to key stakeholders. Now, while they might not understand all of the business drivers that are influencing the requirements that they're gathering, they're at least going to be able to have those initial conversations with the key stakeholders within their organization or at a company to be able to understand what, in totality, you need to be able to include in your solutions design to be able to meet the needs and the requirements that you're you're striving to meet. So that's really, in my mind, what a solutions architect is. They're probably extremely good at a single stack. They're probably a subject matter expert in that stack. They understand everything that goes into being able to design a solution for a specific purpose based off of the requirements that they're capable of gathering. Now, as we think about what the VMware Certified Design Expert Certification really is, and you've heard me talk about this in the past, especially if you've attended one of the many workshops that I've done over the last eight years, is that the VCDX takes it the next step. It will help take a solutions architect and help them hone down their uh, specific capabilities to be able to think not just around what the technical solution is, but also some of the longer term goals that the organization has for their infrastructure or their cloud design that you're working on. Now, at a minimum, a VCDX is going to be able to sit down with the key stakeholders and be able to ask the correct questions to be able to drill down into all of the different requirements that this infrastructure design is going to need to have, whether it be for a private cloud or a public cloud service. And from there, the a VCDX is going to be able to not just make design decisions, to be able to meet those requirements, those constraints, and the assumptions that you make, 
they're going to be able to identify all of the risks that are associated with those design decisions. And most importantly, from a VCDX perspective, the architect is now going to be able to understand, rationalize, and most importantly, be able to explain why they made the design decisions that they made. They're going to be able to take into consideration many factors and be able to pick out the correct design decision that's fit for purpose. And they'll be able to explain to the other cloud architects or the other SREs, as well as the key stakeholders within the organization, why that specific design decision or set of design decisions has been made. And then they'll be able to document that entire architecture from start to finish to be able to provide a work product that goes over the entire architecture design that anyone who's going to be involved in operating that cloud environment or that private cloud environment day to day so that they understand what they're going to have to do, both from a day zero setup perspective to a day two oper operationalization and a lifecycle management perspective. That's really what's going to start to separate a solutions architect from a VCDX architect. Now we get to what is an enterprise architect. Now there's a lot of different definitions out there for all three of these roles. But in my experience, an enterprise architect is able to take the best of the solutions architect, the best of the VCDX architect, and morph it into this complete view of an individual who's able to talk both about the business side of what it means to design a proper architecture, as well as the technical side of the architecture and the technical design. Now, an enterprise architect is really going to have to be an expert in having conversations at the executive level all the way down to the SRE level. They're going to need to be able to understand what is behind all of the business reasons for the requirements that they're gathering. They're going to be able to need to apply some sort of framework around how they're going to do the architecture design. Whether that's TOGAF or another one of the frameworks out there, they're going to need to be able to hone in on one, show an organization why that framework is so important, and then be able to get all of the stakeholders from the executive leadership at the C-level to the vice presidents of applications or engineering and the vice presidents of infrastructure all together, as well as the project managers and the executors at the operations level, whether it's a systems administration team or an SRE team, to be able to understand everything that's going into this architecture design that the enterprise architect is creating and delivering back to the organization. And so that enterprise architect is really going to have to split his, his or her time 50-50 between the business side of the world and the technical side of the world. They're going to need to be able to think strategically and critically think about the reasons behind everything, both from a business perspective and from a technical perspective, in order to be successful in this role. And so for my understanding and my personal experience, if we were to look at these three levels, I see the enterprise architect really at the pinnacle of that triangle, with a VCDX being a subject matter expert and a and a key individual who's able to begin to think strategically, begin to think about the business layers, and then that solutions architecture really forming the foundation for all architects to be able to understand what it is that they're doing, how to design a technical solution. Now, the other key differentiator that I'll make between the bottom two layers of architecture and that pinnacle layer of enterprise architecture is that an enterprise architect really should be a master of many different technology stacks. So whether that means that they're an expert in the private cloud with VMware Cloud Foundation, and then they're also an expert in one or more of the different public cloud offerings, that's really going to be critical because for many organizations today in 2024, they're no longer on a single stack in a single data center or a single colo. They more than likely have environments across the myriad of different cloud offerings from on-prem to public cloud, and they can potentially even be leveraging more than one cloud service provider. So they're going to be mixing and matching the different services that go into designing an architecture. And an enterprise architect is really going to have to be able to understand 
what it takes to be able to bring all of those cloud offerings together. Now, if you're interested in learning more about what it means to be an architect, especially what it means to earn the VCDX certification, I encourage you to check out my playlist on the YouTube channel specifically around enterprise architecture and the VCDX certification to be able to continue to grow your skills. And also check out my blog, virtualelephant.com, where I talk a lot about what it means to be able to implement an architecture across multiple cloud offerings, as well as some of the key factors that just go into enterprise architecture in general. Now, I highly encourage all of you out there who are looking to continue your career along these different architecture paths to consider getting the advanced certifications that your individual stack offers to you if you're a solutions architect. And certainly consider earning your VCDX certification, even if you're not a VMware-specific subject matter expert. I think there's a lot in the VCDX certification that differentiates itself from the other certification programs out there. And then once you've done that or in parallel to doing those things, I highly encourage you to consider the TOGAF Enterprise Architecture Certification and coursework that it includes. It is a great way to be able to expand your knowledge and be able to think differently, especially if you've been a consultant or worked for just a few companies in your career and you have a limited scope. Be able to expand your horizons by doing that coursework and earning that certification. Now, if you're liking this content, please consider subscribing to my channel, Virtual Elephant, on YouTube. Make sure you turn on notifications and hit that like button, as well as consider leaving me a comment below and letting me know where you are in your career path in the architecture world. I'd be interested to hearing from all of you. Please make sure that you also reach out to me on X at Chris Mutchler, and I look forward to talking to you next time.